Um, but let me first recall um, the virtual fabric theorem. And um, especially it's uh, full force. <laughs> so, uh, theorem. That's um, perhaps um, not any one definition, but one definition. So, definition. So, that uh, L is the uh, three minute code. And for me, all three minute codes are get used to be compact, or you have to be connected, and uh, yada, yada, yada. Um, and um, we say that the class of phi in H chapter 1, N with rational coefficients, which is the same as for the morphos, I want to add to the if you want, uh, is um, fiber. If um, while it exists a vibration, I will bundle P from uh, N over S1 such that, um, now there are two ways of saying it, um, either a P lies in uh, the pullback um, of uh, the first homology of um, S1, so that's pretty unbeatable, um, or alternatively, i.e. Um, another way of saying it is, um, so if you look at um, the vibration of S1, then that induces um, a mass from pi 1n to um, pi 1 of S1, pi 1 of S1 is the z, and if that map from pi 1n to z is exactly the same as your phi from morphism from pi 1n to q up to multiplication by a rational number. So if that is the same as the V times K for some K. Okay. So uh, that's what it means uh, for um, a cohomology class of fiber. So basically just the corresponds um, to vibration that comes from um, surface of vibration of S1. And um, with that definition, we can formulate um, here this theorem. So uh, that um, n has to be a reducible size. If, um, and that goes back to, well, I guess it was published in 2008 and announced, I guess, 2007. If uh, pi 1n is um, virtually a uh, reverse, then for any c in H of a one, oops, a one. Um, the writing class um, in um, on zero perhaps. Uh, the writing class um, in first commodity of n, and there exists a finite cover p from n tilde to n, such that um, the pullback of the p well, such that. Let's see. So I start off with my favorite, the three minute fold, which has this funny condition on pi 1. I uh, will come back to it in a second. And um, you take um, a class phi. If a phi is really fiber, you're happy, then nothing you want to do. But now let's say you have a non fiber class of phi. And um, now you would like to see what perhaps in the finite cover um, uh, you can improve uh, on phi. And now one of the basic things you learn in theory of topology is if you have a class phi downstairs, it's not fiber. In the final cover, the pullback can also not be fiber. So you cannot just turn a non-fiber class into a fiber class within the final cover. But you can do the next best thing, namely you can find a final cover such that the pullback is a limit of fiber classes. So you can approximate it by um, limit of fiber classes. You can approximate it by uh, fiber classes um, in H of 1 and tilde with the rational coefficients. Okay? So that's a fantastic um, theorem. So you can really take, uh, you have your favorite 3 minute old, and you have this funny condition on pi 1, and then you can take your favorite um, cohomology class, and you can turn it, um, you can make it as fiber as it possibly can be in the final cover, meaning you can approximate the fiber curve process. Mm. So, but 
here's a condition on the virtual reverse. So uh, when I first saw a reversal, um, my opinion was um, that um, the class of three method groups, uh, which are reverse, a virtual reverse, is also known as the empty set. Um, <laughs> it's a completely outrageous uh, definition, and if you um, look at the definition, and if you take your favorite with the three manifold and you want to show it's a virtual reverse, then well, good luck. Um, like the, pretty much the only one we can show it by hand is like um, S1 times the surface, and then you have to kill it by hand. But otherwise, um, it seems completely outrageous um, definition. And of course, um, the great miracle which um, occurred in three manifold topology is um, the following theorem uh, due to Agel. Shetitsky, uh, Weiss, and uh, Weiss, she was mentioned you. Okay. So one of my claims uh, to fame in uh, theory field topology is that I can spell up Shetitsky without cheating, without looking at my lecture notes. <laughs> um, okay. Um, I would have had uh, bad handwriting, so um, uh, then uh, I can always say it's correct. It just means reading. So um, what did they prove um, if um, n is um, irreducible and uh, not a closed graph manifold, then um, well, what happens is um, you, you can find the finite index uh, subgroup of five prime which uh, embeds into a right angle Dalton group. And then um, Ian also showed that um, if you're writing Lawton group, um, you're virtual reefers. So in particular, if you find a finite link subgroup, which embeds into a writing Lawton group, but then in particular, pi 1 of n is uh, virtual reefers in particular. Upstairs. 
And that's an extremely useful statement. So not only did it just have some random fibering upstairs, but uh, this exposition about the fees. And basically, um, I spent the last, um, I think my research program the last two years was um, to exploit exactly that fact. Um, extremely useful. So, uh, so far so good. And now let's switch to something completely different, and we'll come back to this um, uh, later on. OK, let's uh, switch to uh, something very naive and uh, old fashioned. Uh -oh. So, um, namely, uh, let's allow for the definition so that uh, phi be a group. Um, so, the most of the extremely function of um, the definition of initially is a ready group. So, we say. Um, I split um, over a subgroup um, B if, um, well, if you can write the uh, I as um, an H and N extension, where the um, subgroup which you do in is exactly given by B. So T, B, B inverse uh, B equals B of Mm. If you're not so familiar with the group theory, let's immediately switch to an example so that it looks um, much more familiar. So let's do an example. And um, so let um, N be three uh, manifold and uh, sigma from N, well, uh, properly embedded, um, connected, um, incompressible surface. So incompressible just means a pi one objective. Well, and of course, uh, we all know that uh, we can recover pi 1 of n um, from the complement of sigma by um, an HN extension. So we can write pi 1 of n. So it's just given by take pi 1 of um, n minus um, little two the neighborhood. Uh -oh. So you want to like, sigma to be now separating? Uh, yes, so thank you. Um, not separating, yes. So, uh, so you just take the complement of sigma, and then you glue in, um, well then basically you um, identify a surface on the left and on the right, and that gives you an HN extension, so T of pi 1 of sigma times 0, T inverse equals uh, 3 of pi 1 of sigma times 0, my apologies. So, um, where phi is just a map which um, sends sigma times zero to sigma times one. Okay, so um, in that language, um, what it says is that pi one of n splits um, over um, pi one of sigma. Okay, so pi one of n splits um, over the surface group um, pi one. Slogans of um, Freeman field topology is um, that uh, the fundamental group um, basically knows almost everything about the uh, three methods. And um, in particular, you can ask um, what well, is a popular question like um, if you if your fundamental group does something, does it is it also reflected as a topology? So, for example, you can ask um, why well, you have a three manifold and you have um, a splitting of the fundamental group along um, uh, a surface group. Does uh, that splitting of the fundamental group um, correspond to a topological splitting? So, question. So, um, if um, I1 of n uh, splits um, over a surface group, um, does um, the splitting Um, from uh, an uh, embedded um, surface. <coughs> okay, so um, somebody gives you an abstract uh, splitting of uh, I1, and um, 
where the bee is a surface group, and now you can ask, well, um, does the bee come from a surface or not? And that's sort of a typical question which um, um, people, I guess, were asking in the 60s and 70s. I wasn't around, but um, that's uh, my impression, I guess. Okay, and um, well, it depends a little bit on what you mean by surface group. So, um, there was some little bait here. So, um, the answer is yes, if you split along the fundamental group of a closed surface. So, that's basically a, a theorem uh, due to a uh, and uh, Gregorak, I have no idea how to pronounce it, uh, from 1973, mm, which means I might just have been alive. Mm, so if, um, so what happens if, um, yes, if um, we uh, split um, I1N along I1, of a closed surface. Okay, so if you have any splitting of your parametric group um, along a um, parametric group of closed surface, then that splitting is, can actually be realized logically. Okay, so I should have some stress and loss. Mm. So um, now this question arises, what about um, if you split along I1 of a um, well, surface with a boundary? Mm, well, yes, um, um, Paul is um, clever and already making faces. Um, so yeah, that's um, certainly dubious because somehow if you, um, like um, um, a three minute group is just um, uh, keeping with um, three groups um, sitting inside, um, um, they certainly don't come uh, from uh, um, surfaces um, in general. Um, so we have some very dubious, um, and we'll come back to it in a second. But let me just, um, just um, uh, specialize um, to um, our um, favorite case of um, being with the boundary, namely to not complement, before I come back to um, that question. So uh, let uh, now so K in S3 be a not. Let's just introduce some notation, so we write um, um, x um, k, which we often just be x, um, is s3 minus um, little tubular, open tubular neighborhood around k, and uh, i k with i1 of uh, s3 minus k, or i of x, um, and then that's also g k will be the genus of k. And um, what is that? So that's just a minimal genus um, of such surfaces. Okay. And um, then um, uh, I K splits um, along. Um, I1 of the minimal machine and the surface. Uh, I.e. along the free group uh, on two GFK um, generators. Okay, so that's just because if you have a minimal machine and the surface, um, then it's also incompressible by uh, the loop theorem. Okay, so nothing fancy, so it's just exactly in this type here, and the only thing you need is this minimal genus cipher surface is incompressible. And so now you can ask, um, well, if you have a knot group, um, can you split it, um, uh, we are splitting along a free group, um, does it come from a cipher surface? And, um, well, in some sense, a simple observation is um, that um, the answer is yes, um, if k is a fiber. So if, um, um, K is a uh, fiber, then um, I K can split um, only 
Uh, oh, sorry, I should say one thing which is sort of, for some people is understood, for some not. Um, so when I say H and N extension, I want my phi to be a checklist. So here, phi is a map from B into X, so it's a one morphism. For example, I could have stiff a little bit of what, what do you mean by H and N extension, but I want this to be a one morphism. Okay, and so if K is fibered, then it's really not very hard. I'm just um, three line proof um, that um, the fundamental group can really only split um, over pi one of um, the fiber, meaning pi one of um, the one and only minimal genus cycle surface. So it can split only over pi one of um, the fiber, which is just a uh, free group on um, 2 GK generators. Okay, so if we have a fiber at the north, um, well, um, there's not much uh, going on with the fundamental group. Um, and it's not difficult to see that the, if it splits, um, the splitting already has to come from um, the fiber. Okay, so uh, that's um, at least one uh, instance of terribly interesting where the question also has a positive answer, even though we split along three groups. Okay, so what's interesting now are non fibered knots, um, and um, so there's um, a little theorem uh, due to myself and um, um, Ben Silver and Susan Williams, which um, well, I think we finished it um, last Friday or so, uh, so it's um, as hot as it gets. Um, so, um, well, uh, mostly we finished it last Friday because we were in Madame for a long time. Um, and a different story. Namely, mm, if um, K is a non fiber, then um, I K splits um, along any free uh, group of rank. Um, Greater equal than the twice domestic So, um, in particular, um, it will split um, over a free group of odd rank, and then it cannot come from a surface surface. So, take any free subgroup of big enough rank and then splits over that? Take any free subgroup of. No, 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 so we construct, no, no, that doesn't work, no, no. So we will give you, and we have to construct the three groups. So, um, so let's just say, so preliminary, um, I K splits um, over three uh, groups um, of uh, all the rank. So um, these splittings cannot uh, come from um, cipher surfaces. So um, uh, not realized by surfaces. Mm, I mean, I'm pretty sure uh, people in the 70s were extremely well aware of the fact that you cannot um, generalize uh, that result here for Fortlet and Fortlet and Gregorak um, to um, free groups, but that's sort of um, um, particularly nice way of seeing it. Um. And um, I will also, I also want to sketch uh, the proof, it's not so terribly hard. Mm, except I'm really a little bit dumb. Um, so, uh, uh, so let's just start out with um, a minimal genus cipher surface. So let's think of the uh, minimal genus cipher surface. I mean, so they could come from non-orientable surfaces, perhaps. Some horrible way. No, but if it's non orientable, no. Yeah. Non orientable surfaces and not constants. Um, um, they can have odd non orientations. But we want them. Um, this free group probably doesn't have any sort of peripheral information. No, it just uh, comes from this web. 
Um, which doesn't um, concede. So um, what you wrote is correct. Yeah. But if you use the word cipher, then it might be all. So you say um, all kind of arguably come from. Um, that doesn't make much sense, does it? Non oriented surface um, properly inserted. Um, Check any penny. Check out what surface is. Um, but then, but you want you to like, okay, panic. Um, what you no, know was right. No, but then, but then, how do you get an H1 extension? Like, if you have an, any of a non-trivial, uh, any of a non-oriented um, normal still, bundle? I can still, then, yeah, I can still cut out a normal bundle. And but then you only have one uh, solution. Like, how, how do you get your H1 extension? Uh, it's not okay. No, okay, so it's not a study. It's a, it's a free plot. Never mind. Okay. Um, okay, so let's say it was a minimal chain at the of surface. And um, let's write um, uh, N, which I should um, So M is now F minus a little tubular <coughs> neighborhood. And um, as I just said before, so then of course um, pi k, I can write it as an HN extension where I take pi 1 of m, next to variable t, and then uh, pi 1 of um, sigma times a 0, say, t the inverse. That's the same as um, pi 1 of sigma times 1, which is what I said before. And now we want to modify this HN extension. So what one needs is um, um, there exists um, a G in pi 1 m such that um, pi 1 of sigma times 0 and um, G generate, but G is very bad, because G is a genus, let's say K. Uh, such that they together generate um, a free group um, of um, rank um, 2g plus um, 1. So um, that's a claim, what's a statement, what's a theorem, proposition, lemma. Um, so um, capital is raw picture. So here is um, your x. Here's your cipher surface sigma. You um, take out a little people in the neighborhood. So what's left is um, uh, M has some topology. And um, the claim is now that you can take your cipher surface here, and you can take um, you can find a curve. Um, K such that the cipher surface um, plus the K generate a free group um, of rank um, um, 2G, so coming from the cipher surface, and um, K, that's one. And um, if um, X is uh, hyperbolic, then that follows, um, um, I guess, from general nonsense about um, hyperbolic um, groups. Um, um, and I'm sure 98% of the audience know more about it than I do. Um, if uh, K, if uh, X is not diabolic, uh, well, then it gets a little bit of fiddling, like somehow, um, to make, uh, to find the uh, K. So that took us a couple of months um, um, to do the fiddling correctly. That's true in it's type of Say again? So far you haven't used the null. Oh, yeah, use it. Because if, um, cause if, if uh, K was fibered, the complement would just be um, a sigma times the oh, surface, okay. and then there's no space. And, Left them, um, so that's exactly why you use fiber, non fiber sorry. So I should stress it, yeah. So since um, a non fiber, okay, and then now we're basically done. So now all we have to do is we have to um, rewrite that this um, HN extension so that. Let me continue here. So then, what we do is um, very simple. 
to take pi 1 of k, to take pi 1 of m, your out of t, and now for good measure, you throw in um, a new variable, let's say um, x, and um, you have your old relations. And uh, now, if I get it to the right, so uh, T K T inverse equals um, X. So what's going on? So uh, it's um, the same group, because what did I do? I added um, a new generator, and then I immediately killed it. So it's um, the same group. But um, now what do you do? Um, now you amalgamate um, the um, group of pi 1 of sigma, 0, and k, which is a free group um, of rank 2g plus 1, with um, 1, another group. So basically, um, what we just showed is that the pi k splits um, over um, pi 1 of the group generated by pi 1 sigma 0 and uh, k but that is a free group of from um, rank 2g plus 1. And um, I mean, here the statement is so strong, and we can do it for any rank uh, greater than uh, 2gk, but that's not the very hard at that stage. And that's how you can increase the rank by 1. But um, so the key ingredient is um, to find the, the extra k, which um, is of a large and some you are um, um, fundamental group of the cipher surface. Um, and um, we need have to use a few things um, to get to this point. OK. Mm. So uh, if you want to, you can now say that uh, we have um, like a dichotomy between fiber and non-fiber knots. Like uh, fiber knots um, have um, very poor, only one splitting, and um, fiber and non-fiber knots have <coughs> more kinds of splittings. Mm. We also proved uh, another theorem, which is um, a little bit different. Let me just state it without um, going into the details. So, uh, namely, if um, K is a non fiber term, then pi K splits. Um, of um, non-free groups um, of um, arbitrarily large um, rank. <coughs> so it turns out you can also split them with the not group um, of um, lots and lots of uh, non-free groups. Mm. But perhaps I will not say anything about the proof. Okay, any questions so far? So, let's go back to um, this theorem here. So if you have a non fabric knot, then you can split as a fundamental group um, over any free group, um, as long as uh, the rank is uh, greater than uh, 2g. Now you can ask an obvious question, I mean, can you also split it um, along a free group of rank less than 2g? So um, we have to put it down explicitly. Uh, that's not entirely obvious, I would say. So, uh, 
is, um, I mean, the, when the first um, four questions are first written down the question, you would, would say, well, perhaps um, if you have a splitting, you can realize it by surface, and then you're done. But I just convinced you that if you can uh, split the knot groups um, in, uh, along three groups, um, which certainly do not come from embedded surfaces. Mm. And um, if you now look at um, the literature, which is out there, like there's a lot of literature, 60s, 70s, 80s, where people were studying questions like that, um, and um, it turns out, um, well, there are a few results which you can use. So, so for example, well, if it, um, pi k splits um, along a trivial group, free group of rank zero, well, the Keynesian conjecture tells you that, um, and then you get it. Well, if you split along um, a free group of rank 1, along um, LZ, uh, then you can apply the annulus theorem. And with a little bit of work, um, you can uh, show that that's not possible unless um, you have a trivial knot. But uh, once you go to a free group of um, rank 2 or greater, there's no um, a realization result um, in the literature which will give you um, this, um, this question here um, for free. OK, so. Uh, no classical answer to the best of my knowledge. Or, well, if you want the G greater than zero, or both the rank is greater than one. Yes, very good. Um, that's exactly what's coming next. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, that's no, 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 very good. That's what you mean of possible into the deeper one. Um, okay. Um, so yes, we have um, uh, at least one audience member who's um, uh, awake and um, <laughs> uh, still can still follow the talk. So uh, yes, so, so a great suggestion. That's exactly what we would do. I mean, let's look at. Um, the Alexander Pullman. Because um, people who know me know that I cannot give a talk uh, without mentioning Alexander Pullman. I thought you would have just left the subject there, but. No, 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 that's exactly what um, uh, was going to come. So, um, what can I avoid? So, when at Columbia you define the Alexander phenomenon as the only characteristic of uh, not flu homology, but um, it seems like uh, these days are gone. So let me give you a different definition. So um, there are trillions of definitions, um, and um, I must pick uh, one's favorite one. So let me pick you, uh, give you my favorite um, quick and dirty definition. So um, the definition of Alexander phenomenon. So, so, um, so, so, wait, so you're saying that the Alexander polynomial is not classical? No, no, but we can, we, you cannot prove for the theorem using the Alexander polynomial. Well, <laughs> the Alexander polynomial. Wouldn't be so, it's not so easy. Um, okay, so um, how do I how do we find So, given K, we consider. So, let's look at uh, the Alexander module and I will be cheap and look at it with rational coefficients. So that's just, um, if you don't know what that means, so just the homology of the intrinsically cover of a knot. And um, now I cleverly picked um, coefficients in Q to the inverse. Q to the inverse is a PID. So any module is um, um, some of cyclic modules. Um, And uh, now we just define the Alexander polynomial as um, the product of all these polynomials. Okay, quick and dirty, but it works. 
and um, now one can prove the following um, lemma. So uh, due to uh, Siegel, Silver, Williams, and independently dated by Capolidis, um, but you just mentioned it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if uh, uh, pi k splits uh, over a b over any group, doesn't have to be a free group, um, then um, the rank uh, then the degree of the extended polynomial gives you um, a lower bound on the rank of um, I think that was what you were trying to say, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so, perhaps just a corollary. Is there a twiddle? Uh, H1 X twiddle K or something? Well, um, either X twiddle for interest to cover or X with a um, twisted copy. Oh, twisted copy, okay. Yeah. That's what, okay. Yeah. Twisted copy. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's just uh, quickly do the corollary, which is um, also due to the four authors. Uh, namely, if um, the uh, uh, degree of the Alexander polynomial um, equals <coughs> twice the genus of K, then um, the answer here is uh, yes, no, um, no. So, uh, mm, so what's going on? So uh, if you mm, split along B, rank of B, for, uh, if you split along a group B and the degree of the Alexander polynomial, um, so here's the rank of B, here's um, the uh, twice the genus of K, and here's um, the degree of the Alexander polynomial, and if you squeeze them, um, but the, the rank of B between the, uh, you squeeze it between the genus and the degree of the Alexander polynomial, but they, they are the same, um, you run. Okay, and of course uh, there are um, lots of knots uh, for which the Alexander polynomial detects in the genus, um, uh, all knots up to 10 crossings, um, but it's not true uh, for um, all knots. And uh, perhaps let's just very quickly improve um, um, the lemma. And um, in some sense, uh, if you know how to prove um, that the degree of the Alexander polynomial gives you a lower bound on the not genus, um, take exactly the same proof and you're done. So let me just quickly remind you. Um, so, proof of lemma. So, um, well, um, what do you do? So, if uh, I, if you can write that in an HM extension. Then, well, so you, you look at your um, Alexander module, and um, well, I can also, I mean, I can uh, look at x, or I can look at pi, it doesn't matter, because it's a k by 1. So I look here at um, the um, h1 of the infinitely cup of pi, if you want them, um, which is exactly the same as the Alexander module. And um, <coughs> now, now you can just uh, put it into um, a long exact sequence. And so what you put here, so usually here you have h1 of the cipher surface. And uh, now that role is now played by b. So you get here h1 of the b, and the q inverse. Um, and um, here's h1, usually of the complement of the cipher surface. Here you can just uh, use a. So you have uh, a and the q um, and now here you have um, uh, two inclusion maps, left and right, um, identity and phi if you want them. So I identity minus um, phi, or inclusion minus phi, and then there's a t. And then basically, for the um, Alexander polynomial of um, uh, k is uh, just um, the determinant of that um, um, matrix. And um, of the size of the matrix is bounded by h1 of b, and um, hence the degree of um, so the degree of Alexander polynomial is um, determinant um, 
of sorry degree of determinant of that matrix. Okay, but um, that uh, matrix is bounded by the rank of um, H1 of B, which is bounded by the rank of B. So um, that is a matrix, um, so that's um, over here, a red one. Um, yeah. Um, so it's just exactly the same proof as, um, it's exactly the same proof of line by line, word by word, um, that the um, degree of the Alexander gives a lower bound on um, the genus. Okay. Um, okay. So, um, that's good. And so it gives you some uh, evidence um, for um, giving a, having a negative um, answer to my question. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think everybody who knows me now knows what's coming next. Namely, you move from uh, Alexander polynomial to the twisted Alexander polynomial. Um, so uh, let me just very quickly remind you of the definition. Trivial one-dimensional representation. So alpha 
pi to gl1 c trivial. And um, the twisted extended polynomial is nothing but um, our old friend, uh, the uh, ordinary extended polynomial of the Okay. Mm. Okay, so where are we? Mm. So why does it do us any good? Well, so you have uh, that uh, inequality once again. It's um, okay. It's a little bit more complicated, but not much more complicated. Um, so um, let me just write out. <coughs> so, um, so one well, has to be a little bit careful. So you want to twist the elect one. Um, we take um, a not complement that phi is a generator alpha. If that is not zero, then the uh, degree of um, the twisted extended polynomial. And then you want to relate it to the rank of a B. Mm. Well, you don't quite have an inequality as it stands, because basically, if you take um, k dimensional representation, you sort of um, naively in, um, multiply your degree by k. So you have to divide by the dimension of your representation by k. Mm. And then you get an inequality. So that is not quite correct as it's written down, um, but um, morally it's correct. You have to do um, a few such factors left and right, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's basically um, um, same proof. Like you just have to stoop it up a little bit um, to worry about your twisted coefficients. OK. And. Uh, now, one can use some following theorem. So, so twist Alexander polynomials give you a lower bound than our genus, um, <coughs> something um, that he came and I proved a while ago. But um, what's more interesting is that uh, for any knot, you can always find um, a representation such that the corresponding twist Alexander polynomial detects uh, the genus. So, that is um, something. Um, and I proved them um, last year. And um, so given any k, there exists um, a representation uh, alpha such that um, we have, um, well, it's getting cheating a little bit, but doesn't matter, we have um, an equality. And so, uh, putting um, these two uh, propositions together um, shows you that if you split um, an out group along a free group, um, the rank has to be at least um, twice the genus. Corollary is no. Okay. No is the answer to it. You cannot split. Uh, you cannot um, uh, split them by a, a smaller free group. Mm. So I would say a, a, a word about the proof in a second. But you can't split along any group. Yeah, it's not only free group yeah. but along any group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So uh, um, so, for, uh, so it has a couple of um, more or less nice consequences. So for example, like a question you can always ask is you have um, a manifold, a three manifold, if it's a fundamental group, um, you take your favorite um, topological property of a three manifold, can you extract it from pi one? So, for example, you have um, a knot, it has a fundamental group, can you extract um, uh, the um, uh, genus of a knot um, from the knot group? And basically, now you can say that um, the genus of a knot is um, well, half the minimal rank um, of um, a free group along which you can split a knot group. Mm. So, yeah, how do you prove that the theorem? So uh, that's where um, this blackboard um, enters. Um, 
And um, well, perhaps let me just say it in the words. Um, so, how uh, effective is it? So, where we k there's an alpha, but we don't know what's the alpha. So, um, what is some? Okay, thanks for providing them here. Um, the key word for mentioning another paper, um, so uh, by your colleague uh, Nick. So uh, Nick Jackson and uh, Nathan and um, I. Will, so we looked at um, twisting cyclopolymers for hyperbolic knots, and we just used uh, the um, obvious representation, the following um, representation. And uh, for all knots up to 50 crossings, um, this representation, um, if you look, it's corresponding at twisting cyclopolymer. It detects the genus um, and fibernets. But whether that's always true, uh, God knows. Uh, but I think that's actually a nice question. Like, uh, you have a hyperbolic knot, take your whole number representation, um, look at the corresponding twisted extended phenomenon, does it always detect the genus? It's really difficult, I think, to find a counterexample, presumably also more, and also hard to prove it. Okay, so how do you prove um, uh, this uh, theorem? So, perhaps I should first say, um, the fact that you have an equality is um, uh, very simple to see if k is fiber. Well, generally, if you have um, a fiber three manifold um, and you have um, um, a fiber class um, um, V, and if you look at uh, the corresponding twisted extended phenomenon, then uh, uh, you always get the degree is always given by the first norm of V. And um, the, the proof um, of the theorem is that when you look at um, you not complement, um, look at the phi, which is um, well, the generator of H1. And um, well, um, a not complement is not a closed graph manifold and irreducible. So you can appeal the virtual fibering theorem. So you take uh, your phi, which um, is a generator of H1 of um, X, not complement. Now um, you find this finite cover where you can take the pullback and you can approximate it uh, by um, fiber clauses. And for fiber clauses, um, uh, it's easy to detect um, the first norm using an extended phenomenon. <coughs> now all you have to do is use them, I have to push it <coughs> to the limit. And uh, what you do is, um, just in two words, um, so up the stairs you first look at the multivariable extended phenomenon of um, the final cover, and then the multivariable extended phenomenon also gives you a lower bound, and basically uh, it's a lower bound which is continuous, so you get equality for all fiber clauses, um, and then you also get equality for the limit of um, Fiber clauses, and then uh, you want to go from multi-variable extended to with one variable extended to What you do is um, upstairs you take um, um, a certain one-dimensional representation, which somehow collapses your multi-variable extended to into one variable extended to without losing the information. So upstairs you take a one-dimensional representation, and then you take downstairs uh, the induced representation, and that's exactly what it does. So the representation here comes from your go to finite cover. Um, where the pullback can be approximated by fiber clauses. And up here you take, um, uh, make a clever choice for one-dimensional representation, and now you take a used representation, and um, you're done. And uh, it's funny because so, and that question is such a, I don't know, 1960s, 70s question, but I don't know of a proof which doesn't use um, any of the heavy machine making. Okay, thank you. Exactly for this example, we took um, like a, one way of doing it is you t the hyperbolic. You take um, the um, um, God given uh, uh, representation, oh. and um, the degrees will be different. Like uh, that twisted extended polynomial um, will give you um, a genus two and a genus of three for um, uh, these two um, knots. So you say you got up to fifteen crossings. Yeah. 
So uh, how about Zypher's original example of Alexander Polymiel was a pretzel lot? That's just beyond your consensus? Was Nathan, was Nathan, Nathan? <laughs> yes, what? <laughs> um, I guess, um, so Fretzel knots um, example one, I guess we didn't do any of that. I'm not familiar with this example. But it would be easy to find. Draw me a picture and I will test it. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, it's, it's, I mean, we only stop at 70 and 50 minutes, we have to stop somewhere, but uh, I mean, how long did it take to compute the example? It's not long, did it? No, not. <coughs> any individual example is like 15 crossings. Yeah, it's up a little bit. 300,000 knots. But it's a very, it, as I think in practice, it's one of the most efficient ways of um, determining um, the genus. So. Yeah? So this is a variation on Sal's question. If you could make all the instances virtually on the right board effective, would it effectivize your engineering with Stefano? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But good luck at um, <laughs> effectivizing, yes. Are there any other questions?